A reading from the book of Genesis. The whole world spoke the same language using the same words. While the people were migrating in the east, they came upon a valley in the land of Sinar and settled there. They said to one another, come, let us mold bricks and harden them with fire. They used bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky and so make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered all over the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower that they had built. Then the Lord said, If now, while they are one people, all speaking the same language, they have started to do this, nothing will later stop them from doing whatever they presume to do. Let us go then, go down, and then confuse their language so that no one will not understand what another says. Thus the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the speech of all the world. It was from that place that he scattered them all over the earth. The word of the Lord. Bless the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Bless the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The Lord brings to naught the plans of nations. He foils the designs of peoples. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Bless the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Bless the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. Bless the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. From his fixed throne he beholds all who dwell on the earth. He has fashioned the heart of each, he who knows all their works. Bless the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? What could one give in exchange for his life? Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this faithless and sinful generation the Son of Man will be ashamed of when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. He also said to them, Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come in power. The Gospel of the Lord.
perhaps one of the most important and deepest questions of our human existence that each of us individually will ask as we pass through this life is, what is my meaning and purpose of life? Where am I going? And there are really only two paths that one can take to get an answer to that question. One, a wrong path, the other, the right path. Start off thinking this way. 100 years from now, it'll be the year 2117. None of us probably will be around in this world 100 years from now. And ask yourself this question. Will anybody in this world 100 years from now even remember me? Chances are, I suppose the odds will be about as great as for me winning the $1 billion lottery, that someone will remember me, unless we do the great deeds of someone like an Abraham Lincoln or a Mother Teresa. The odds are very much against us that anybody's going to remember us in this world 100 years from now. And yet the wrong path that we can choose to take is exactly what they're doing in our first reading today, to make a name for themselves. They're building this tower. What they're really trying to do is perpetuate their name through all eternity. And if we do not believe in a life after death, that we do not believe that there is the existence of heaven, then we will try to do that in this lifetime. And as I said, chances are no one will remember us a hundred years from now. Our purpose in life is not to make a name for ourselves in this world, and yet that is the grave temptation we all face in this life. And even the smaller things that we do, it's a selfish need that we all have, but we must quickly dismiss it. Because the other path is the true path to being remembered for all ages, not in this world, but in all ages in heaven. But the pathway there is not to make a name for ourselves. The path there is about forgetting ourselves in Jesus Christ. And Jesus clearly spills it out in our gospel today. If you want to save your life, you will lose it, at least by worldly understanding of what it means to save our life, to make a name for ourselves. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. And at the heart of the gospel is the cross. The cross is the only pathway. It's the narrow gate. Human nature, its tendency, particularly in the culture we live in today, wants to go through the wide open doorway. But it's a wide open doorway that only leads to hell. It leads us away from God. Jesus says it has to be the narrow gate. Those are his words. We can't argue with that. And therefore our lives must be about the cross. And the cross is all about a complete self-sacrifice of everything about ourselves, our ambitions, our desires, everything that tends to want to make a name for ourself. And Jesus says that must be erased. That's not easy to do, I know. The wide open gate looks much easier and appealing to us who sojourn through this life, through the 70, 90, maybe 100 years that we live in this world. But it has to be the narrow gate. And so today, let us pray that as we struggle with that, through temptation, through the testing of God, that we will see his light. It's the cross on this end, but it's the glory of God 
in life eternal. Our intercessions are found on page 29. Let us adore Christ who offered himself to the Father through the Holy Spirit to cleanse us from the works of death. Let us adore him and call upon him with sincere hearts. From your generosity, we have received the beginning of this day. You created all things and now you provide for their growth. With your own blood, you ratify the new and eternal covenant. On the cross, blood and water flowed from your side. Let us pray for the intention of our Mass this morning for the repose of the soul of James D. Ryan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers and grant us the grace to live as faithful disciples of your Son, Jesus, that we might one day come to share eternal life in heaven. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 